Introducing episode one of the Healthy School Meals for All podcast. Join the New York School Nutrition Association as they explore how healthy meals at no charge for all students, regardless of economic status, are making a positive impact in school districts. Join our host, Patrick Keneally, Director of Capital Region BOCES and Public and Legislation Chair for New York SNA, as he speaks with Julie Raway, a registered dietitian from Broom Tioga BOCES, and Ruth Connor, Director of Buffalo City Schools, as they share insights into their district's initiatives, like farm to school programs and overcoming challenges in diverse student populations. Dive into discussions about local sourcing, the joys of introducing students to new foods, and the transformative effects of CEP on reducing administrative burdens and stigma. This episode is a deep dive into the world of school nutrition and the strides being made towards better, more inclusive meals for every single student. I'd like to welcome everyone to the first Healthy School Meals for All podcast, where we are going to be looking at the successes of school districts when all students have the right to eat free meals in their district, breakfast and lunch, regardless of their economic status. Um, and today I have with me Julie Rahway, registered dietitian from Broom Tiago Boses, and Ruth Connor, director of Buffalo City Schools. I want to thank you both for being here today. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. Um, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves and just talk a little bit about your district as a whole, and then we'll get into it. Sure. Um, so I'm Julie, and I work with 15 school districts as part of Broom Tioga Boses, uh, down in the Binghamton, New York area. And um, we work with, like I said, the 15 districts. We have about 64 school buildings across two counties, and um, we have quite a robust farm to school program, as well as many other uh, programs for students. Well, my name is Ruth Connor, and I am the director of Buffalo Public Schools. Um, we are a CEP district, and we service about 82 schools. 67 of them are actually Buffalo Public Schools, and the others include charter and non-BPS schools. Um, we have a very diverse clientele of students, um, staff, and trying to meet the needs of all of our kids. And I am Patrick Keneally. I'm a school lunch director for the Capital Region BOCE Shared Food Service. Um, I help out with Fort Edwards School District, Hartford School District, and Cambridge School District, and am entering as chair of public policy and legislation for the New York State School Association. So going after these CEP schools and uh, universal meals for everyone in the state is really important to me. Um, so let's talk first about um, our farm to school initiatives. Um, I'm in rural schools, so our farm to school is really important to the districts. Um, Julie, I know you guys have a great thing with your Rock On Cafe. Can you kind of explain how that works? Yeah, so we have been doing farm to school for quite a few years. <laughs> Not quite sure how many, um, but five to ten at least. And uh, we started very small um, with five of our districts um, with New York Thursdays, which is trying to source an all local meal on a Thursday. And we started with five districts and grew to all 15. And we're, we have about two to four New York Thursdays a month that feature New York State products. And then we've expanded even beyond that uh, with other menu days. Um, but it takes a huge uh, support system to make this happen from community partners um, to all of us in the schools working and even trying to branch out into the classrooms as well, uh, trying to create this um, classroom community cafeteria program, just really bringing everybody together uh, with Farm to School. And we're really proud of the meals we serve. It's not easy, and I know we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but trying to balance out um, more fresh products and being able to, you know, cook with those and cut and slice and dice and everything else um, to create these uh, nice local meals for students to enjoy. And I know uh, there's been billboards popping up around Buffalo <laughs> with uh, highlighting Buffalo's farm to school initiatives. Can you speak to that, Ruth? Well, actually, we had some funds left over with a culturally um, relevant grant um, that we included with the farm to school program it was a part of the food truck grant as well. So we decided to reach out because BPS was doing um, these billboards for the Buffalo Public School District for hiring and this and that. And it was kind of like, hey, why not? So we got some pictures of some great farmers and um, our food truck and 
plastered them all over the city of Buffalo, and it's been a, a very great conversation piece. Actually, I have some employees. Um, we did a little contest. If you can find a billboard in the city of Buffalo, send me a selfie with you in front of it, and you'll have the opportunity to win a gift card. So we had some entries. It was oh, pretty fun. Great. So it's, it's created a lot of conversation, which is great. And now, actually, too, I think awareness for, for the community, not just BPS students and population, but the community and the city of what we're doing in the district. I think that's one of the hardest parts is getting out to the community what we're doing in schools, that it's, you know, the negatives always get highlighted and shared quickly, and the really good things we're doing take a lot longer. It's more of a grassroots type thing that takes, you know, people sharing on social media and then other people seeing it and sharing it as well. And it just the amount of time, Julie, you mentioned, like we're putting into these farm to school meals so that these students can have something local from their neighborhood, their just down the road, their local farmer, you know, we need to see more of that. And I think that the adoption of a healthy meals for all in New York just would give more schools the ability to take part in that. Cause there's, there's so many things that go against us in a school day that, you know, take away from what goes on the tray, that if we could get rid of that aspect of it and really focus on the food that goes on the tray, the kids are just going to be the ones to benefit from that. Can I add to what you said, too, being a rural community, being an urban school district, our kids are not exposed to the down-the-street farmer. And what Farm to School has done for our school and our kids has really educated them, even my staff, to what's grown locally. They kind of didn't have much of an idea on how to handle certain products. So it's been an eye-opening experience for our kids. And then just the education of what happens to the product. Like they go to an apple farm and they pick apples, and then the one student asked about what happens to the apples that are all over the ground because I think he wanted to pick them up and take them home. And they, the gentleman said that they make cider. And then the following Monday they had apple cider on the menu. So it was like a full experience of understanding, which was great for our kids. Uh, yeah, the connect a purpose in farm to school to our local communities is just great. And it's just unfortunate that school districts are left out of that equation when, you know, they're focusing on student debt, tracking, doing student debt letters, mm -hmm. the administrative burden of having to run a free and reduced operation that they can't spend time to make connections with farmers. They can't source local products because... You know, they're trying to just put out a one, a basic menu that they don't lose money on when, you know, with CEP and everyone can grab a meal, we can offer so many more alternatives. And I know you mentioned, Ruth, the, a cultural meal um, grant you were working on. At, Hart at Hartford, we just did um, a Korean beef bulgogi bowl. And to have rural kids eating homemade kimchi with goji jang was like the coolest experience ever. Like... I worked in some different food service sectors and in college campuses, we did some fun stuff because there wasn't really budgets, but to have third graders eating kimchi and like enjoying it and know that the cabbage came from 10 miles from the school was like very impactful as a food service director. Yeah, and when all students are have access to that, it's just amazing. It creates a community when the, in the school. And I know like we've been able to promote our farm to school meals um, with branding, as well as many across New York State have done that as well. I know I'm very jealous of your branding. I know, me too. <laughs> We've been sharing with Kinda others. Kind of don't like her. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. Very creative. And I think the farm to school just lends itself naturally to producing more scratch meals on our menu. And, you know, we work with great industry partners that provide us some amazing value-added items. But to be able to pivot and be able to produce an item on your own is really also impactful for your team. Um, and I know in Buffalo, you guys are doing some interesting things with bringing a brigade chef on. Um, can you explain kind of that poll process? Well, you touch base quite a bit on CEP. So we've been CEP for a while. And yes, with that, uh, there is definitely a lot less paperwork involved every day. Um, it has alleviated a lot of, of work um, on that end, but it's almost like we needed some fresh set of eyes to come in and kind of help and change the direction of where we were, kind of not scratch cooking, but, you know, like a soft scratch um, to enhance what we're doing. So we did hire a chef with Chef Brigade, 
And so far, um, the the success of what he's been doing, and I don't want to say majorly complicated, but a lot of our administration and managers are so focused on the management, and it's amazing to be able to just have somebody focused on the food, on the presentation, on the sanitation, on the training of how to cut something up properly, not to cut up your fingers, um, <laughs> but really to honestly um, and put together a, a presentation. I, I, t I spoke briefly um, before we started that um, we spoke about what the plans were going to be when he started in the summertime, and really I just wanted to see the vision of a September, you know, I want somebody to be able to go and open up September 8th's menu, see a picture of the meal and what it should look like when the child gets it and what the presentation should be on the serving line, um, how the stuff should be panned up on a tray. And Andrew, beyond expectation, he came through, and he's also expanded that to our Saturday program academies. Um, we are getting feedback from our menu that we're offering people that we've never gotten before, which is fantastic. We always do good things, but you talked earlier about that one negative thing that everybody thinks about. And my boss, actually, we had a conversation recently, and he's like, you just got to saturate with the positive. So that way, when that one comes out, at least you have a, a foundation of some positive stuff to help. So so it's been a great thing having Andrew come on. It's, it's amazing what Brigade is doing for school districts. And yeah. I think you touched on a great point that it doesn't have to be elaborate. It's simple. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, you know, people hear scratch cooking and they get kind of hung up on it has to be from scratch, but we've been celebrating so many like quick scratch recipes and it's really like whether it's fully scratch, quick scratch, as long as you're moving the needle forward and, you know, take it, the amount of care that staff is taking in a quick scratch item rather than just dropping a boiling bag and letting it just sit there until we serve it and it's up to temp. But when they're actually going through the process of utilizing a recipe, there's more, they have more steak in that meal. You know, they're plating it a little bit nicer. You know, they're, if we're using New York ground beef to make taco meat, they're actually plating the nachos to look like nachos, not just filling five components on a tray. They're making the meal look whole. And I think, you know, you talk about fresh eyes. I've only been doing this for, I'm in my third school year, so my eyes are still pretty fresh. There's still tons of things I don't know, but it's just that any incremental move forward is something to be so celebrated in schools because, you know, the sometimes with the administrative work the meal kind of wasn't after it was get chicken nuggets and something on the tray let's get the kids fed and get the logs done and everything and you know to be able to take a fresh approach to things now has really been interesting and I know you guys have been doing some really cool things with like the tastings you do and I think the tastings are so important to get kids like used to seeing an item yeah we're really fortunate to have some key farm to school partnerships with our local Cornell Cooperative Extension Office and another nonprofit called the Food and Health Network. Uh, we plan farm to school taste tests in all of our buildings and we basically bring in fresh product and new recipes for students to try. It's amazing because you'd be surprised how many kids have not had a piece of cauliflower um, and we're able to, you know, we did a cheesy Parmesan cauliflower, which made it even more exciting and getting kids to try it and seeing what they think and give us ideas for new menu items as well. Um, again, just going back to like, sometimes kids are like, I'm not going to eat that. But if you can just even encourage them to smell it at first and then try it, we've had a lot of success with that. And then once we put it on the menu, we can look and see if students are accepting it or not. And Again, going back to if we can get minimally processed, uh, even just items that are coming in already cut up for us, it really helps with that speed scratch cooking um, for districts because producing um, farm to school meals is more labor intensive, but as both of you have talked about, it's just better quality. There's a lot of pride in serving it to students. Uh, so we're always looking at revamping, getting kids to try new local products. And I know for me, I feel better about doing it as a CEP district because I know every kid has access to it. Um, one of my districts is newly CEP this year, but last, the first two years I was there, they weren't. So I really struggled personally with like doing special events mm -hmm. in the cafeteria because 
not everyone would participate and they would kind of like look in and see what's going on and like no you can get a meal and they'd be like no I don't want to I don't I already have a negative balance I don't want to add to it and it's like as a culinarian it's like heartbreaking it's like I came to this sector to feed kids and there's just these hurdles and red tape involved mm-hmm. and you know there's an easy way to get rid of it all and just you know adopt a healthy school meals for all for all New York students and I think the the impact just in September of this year for our, the school that is CEP, our ADP is up like 30%. Our reimbursement for September was like $14,000 higher than the previous September. And the kids are just so excited to be involved. And, you know, you've, you've seen so many more new faces eating and the, it's, the community is excited about it. They're, we're having more farmers reach out directly to the school because I was using like a farm buyer to kind of help facilitate because I have three districts, but now farms are contacting the school directly, being like, we want to get our stuff on your menu. And it's just a great thing to see. And, you know, the ability, they know we're feeding all the kids in the school, and that kind of was the trigger to, you know, a catalyst to move those farmers to make contact with us. Yeah, we just had um, 11 out of our 15 were CEP, and now starting November 1st, um, all 15 will be. So... We're interested to see how that evolves. And of course, it's going to be great um, with just our farm to school program, but meals in general, having all kids eat uh, with less stigma um, in the school cafeteria. And just we're excited to see what happens with that. I, um, I've been with Buffalo for 25 years. So prior to it, I was, they were not CEP, you know, and, and I'll tell you the difference it made on our population and how they, there's just no thought process. Just go and get a lunch. There's no, do I have any money or I don't have any money or my mom didn't give me any money. Because, and there's also, I mean, we always talk about the needs of of students as being like a, do they financially, can they afford it? And and unfortunately, I'm speaking from a parent, I've seen people that can afford it, but there's, there's neglect and you see it in unpaid school balances and not sending money in with your child and no response on the invoices that you're sending home to people because they, it's unfortunate, but these are kids and they just need to be fed. They shouldn't be in school and have to worry about if they're going to get breakfast or if they're going to get lunch. If they're hungry, they should eat. Yeah, and for me, I have three kids in, in, their, in their district. They're not CEP. It's hard to per- have them participate in their school program with three of them buying lunch every day. So it's like I spend my 40 hour work week feeding kids and then I'm not financially in a position to have my kids support their school district. And it's like, this is not the way it should be. Like we're, this is crazy. Like I'm giving everything to feed rural children and my suburban children. Like I make them lunch, but like they want to participate every day in their program and it's just not financially feasible. Like, how do you tell them, no, sorry, you can't get the fun fruits and vegetables in school because I got to make your lunch from home to save money. And it's just doesn't, it seems counterproductive to the work that so many CEP school districts are doing to expand programs. And there's still kids that don't have access when they want to have access. That's a very valid point. As parents, I think we all are parents here too. Yes. Are <laughs> you speaking from the voice of, of people that are preparing meals for students, but also have these kids at home? So. Yeah, I have two young kids who are both in school now, and they enjoy school lunch. And actually, I'm living in a district that is going to be CEP November 1st. So it's nice that everyone, um, my kids and their peers, will be eating at school. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. Um, Thank you for the work you guys do every day in your districts for promoting farm to school, promoting scratch cooking daily moving that needle and taking full advantage of the opportunities that CEP is allowing you guys and for furthering the cause and advocacy to make sure that all New York students can have a free breakfast and lunch regardless of their economic status. So this is Patrick Keneally signing off for the first Healthy School Meals for All podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.